say the opening prayer with us. standing with me. King of my life, my crown be now, thine shall the glory be. Lest I forget thy crown, lead me to Calvary. Lest I Yes, lead me to Calvary. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, we approach the throne of grace asking this very thing. Let our eyes behold Calvary and the great sacrifice that was exhibited there for each one of us in this room and all throughout the world. For indeed, you love the world so much that you gave your Son that whosoever should believe in him <clears throat> would not perish but have everlasting life. So, Lord, today, let us see Calvary, but let us never forget that that tomb was empty that first day of the week when Jesus arose and became our 
eternal hope of our own salvation. Father, we pray that you'll bless each person that participates in this program and that hears it. Bless the singers <clears throat> and bless the hearers. This I ask in Jesus' name, amen. amen. Now I think we have Joshua Lee coming. Does anybody have the clear word here today? The clear word. Um, or another Bible translation than the King James? NLC. NLC. Uh, would you be willing to read the same verses in your version after Joshua has uh, read it from the King James? What verses? Uh, Isaiah 53, 1 to 12. Okay, I will be reading Isaiah chapter 53. Who hath believed our report, and to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, and as a root out of a dry ground. He hath no form nor comeliness, and when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire of him. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid as it were our faces from him, he was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely he hath borne our griefs, and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way. And the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed, and he was afflicted, yet he openeth not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before her shearers is dumb, so he openeth not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment, and who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off out of the land of the living. For the transgression of my people was he stricken. And he made his grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death, because he had done no violence, neither was any deceit in his mouth. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him, he hath put him to grief. When thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed, he shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hands. He shall see of the travail of his soul and shall be satisfied. By his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore will I divide a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong. Because he hath poured out his soul unto death, and he was numbered with the transgressors, and he bare the sin of many, and made intercession for the transgressors. Who has, who has believed our message? To whom has the Lord revealed his powerful arm? My servant grew up in the Lord's presence, like a tender green shoot, like a root out of dry ground. There was nothing beautiful or majestic about his appearance. There is nothing to attract him. He, uh, there is nothing to attract us to him. He was despised and rejected, a man of sorrow, acquainted with the deepest grief. We turned our backs on him and looked the other way. He was despised, and we did not care. Yet it was our wickedness that he, that he carried. It was our sorrows that weighed him down. And we thought this trouble, the, we thought his troubles were a punishment from God, a punishment for his own sins. But he was pierced for our rebellion. 
and crushed for our sins. He was beaten so we could be whole. He was whipped so we could be healed. All of us, like sheep, have strayed away. We have left God's path to follow our own. Yet the Lord laid on him the sins of us all. He was oppressed and treated harshly, yet we never said, he never said a word. He was led like a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep in silent before, is silent before the shears, he did not open his mouth. Unjustly condemned, he was led away. No one cared that he died without descendants, that, he, that his life was cut short in midstream. But he was struck down for the rebellion of my people. He had done no wrong and had never deceived anyone, but he was buried like a criminal. He was put in a rich man's grave. But it was the Lord's good plan to crush him and crush and cause him grief. Yet when his life was made an offering for sin, he will have many descendants. He will enjoy a long life, and the Lord's good plan will prosper in his hands. When he sees all that is accomplished by his anguish, he will be satisfied. And because of his experience, my righteousness, my righteous servant, will make it possible. For many, for two, for many to be counted righteous, for he will bear all their sins. He will give him honors of the victorious soldier, because he exposed himself to death. He was counted among the rebels. He bore the sins of many and interceded for rebels. There's nobody in this congregation that knows anybody that loved him so much that he would give his blood for him, for you, for me. But our Lord did it. And the story of redemption is written in a red letter edition by the blood of our Redeemer, Lord Jesus Christ. We will now have the pleasure to listen to a rendition of Written in Red by Jeff Quick, accompanied by Tammy Gilbert on the piano.
If you would open your Bibles with me in Genesis 22, verses 1 to 14, it reads thus, And it came to pass after those things that God did test Abram and said unto him, Abram, and he said, Behold, here I am. And he said, Take now thy son, thy only son Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah, and offer him there for a burnt offering, upon one of the mountains, which I will tell thee of. And Abram rose up early in the morning and saddled his ass and took two of his young men with him and Isaac his son and clave the wood for the burnt offering and rose up and went unto the place of which God had told him. Then on the third day, Abram lifted up his eyes and saw the place afar off. And Abram said unto his young men, Abide ye here with the ass, and I and the lad will go yonder and worship and come unto you again. And Abram took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it upon Isaac his son. And he took the fire in his hand and a knife, and they both went together. And Isaac spake unto Abram his father and said, My father, and he said, here I am, my son. And he said, Behold the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for a burnt offering? And Abram said, My son, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. So they went both of them together. And they came to the place which God had told him of, and Abram built an altar there and laid the wood in order and bound his bound Isaac his son and laid him on the altar upon the wood. And Abram stretched forth his hand and took the knife to slay his son. And the angel of the Lord called unto him out of heaven and said, Abram, Abram. And he said, Here I am. And he said, Lay not thy hand upon the land, lad, neither do thou anything unto him. For now I know that thou fearest God, seeing thou hast not withheld thy son, thy only son, from me. And Abram lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold him, a ram caught in a thicket by his thorns. And Abram went and took the ram and offered him up for a burnt offering in the stead of his son. And Abram called the name of that place Jehovah Jireh, as it is said to this day, in the mount of the Lord it shall be seen, or Jehovah sees. We will now listen to a Romanian quartet. Sta Isus plecat in ruga. Does that sound good? Yes. <laughs> now we will hear the same words repeated with music, and we will listen to these adorative moments.
Kindly ask um, Rodika, could you maybe tell us in a nutshell what the message of the song was? You can come up here in front. I had it translated and I need to find the paper because it's Jesus in gets off. Oh, you have it. Thank you. The prayer of Jesus in Gethsemane. Jesus is praying in the garden, heavily burdened by pain, in the night of the world, praying alone. All have abandoned him. For us, such love. For us, such mercy. Jesus is pleading offering himself on the altar. He is sold for the price of blood. He is humbled as a slave. The shepherd of the world stands alone. His flock is scattered. For us, such love. For us, such mercy. He is sold for the price of blood. Blood for the sanctuary. Crucified on the cross, Jesus Stands alone, alone, the humble lamb without blemish, 
suffers quietly and submissively. For us, such love. For us, such mercy. Crucified on the cross. His cross is the gift of life. In New York Harbor stands the Statue of Liberty, so the Americans say. But for Christians, the Statue of Liberty is the old rugged cross. We will hear this song now. The spotless Son of God hung upon the cross, his flesh lacerated with stripes, those hands so often reached out in blessing, nailed to the wooden bars, those feet so tireless on ministries of love, spiked to the tree, the royal head pierced by the crown of thorns, those quivering lips shaped to the cry of woe, and all that he endured the blood, the drops that flowed from his head, his hands, his feet, the agony that racked his frame, and the unutterable anguish that filled his soul at the hiding of his father's face speaks to each child of humanity, declaring that it is for thee that the Son of God consents to bear this burden of guilt, and for thee he spills the domain of death and opens the gates of paradise, he who stilled the angry waves and walked the foam-capped billows, who made devils tremble and disease flee, who opened blind eyes and called forth the dead to life, offers himself upon the cross as a sacrifice, and of this from love to thee. This is a story of long, long ago of a man who owned a little store. He said, I was proud to have my name up over the door. It was some 2,000 years, as I recall, located in Jerusalem, across from Pilate's great hall. He said that I thought I had everything that anyone would need, and folks would come from miles around, regardless of their creed. But he said there was one thing that he didn't think that he could ever sell. And it was there on a corner, on a shelf, three old rusty spiked nails. 
But then one day, a big Roman soldier came through the door, and as he walked up to me, it seemed that he shook the floor. And I said, please, sir, what can you do with just three rusty nails? Well, he took the nails and says, do you know the man Jesus the Nazarene? You mean the one that goes around doing good? Yes, that's the man. Well, today, I'm going to show the world who's boss. For with these three or rusty spikes, I am going to nail this Jesus to the cross. Well, I stood there numb. I can't begin to describe how I felt. I said, please, sir, don't do that. As on my knees, I knelt. But he just turned and walked away. So I got up and I followed him. And I said, please, sir, please, I will buy them back. But again, he just looked at me with that sneering grin and turned and walked away. In the distance, I could see the howling mob through my tear-stained eyes. Away with him, crucify him, I could hear the cries. And over top of all that noise, and oh, those groans of agony, I could hear the sounds of that hammer as that big Roman soldier nailed my Jesus to the tree. Low in the grave he lay, Jesus my Savior, waiting the coming day, Jesus my Lord. When I was a boy, I read in a book um, the story or the poem, the ballad of John Maynard. And um, I actually didn't bother, well, at the time, I didn't have re the resources, nor did I bother to find out who John Maynard was. John Maynard is a fictive character that was created by the German um, poet uh, Theodor Fontane. And when you read, uh, when you look up the story, this is the background. April 9, 1841, a steam wheeler on Lake Erie caught fire and there was a tremendous loss of life. Um, of the 300 plus minus passengers, 29 survived. And the story is that the the man at the helm, whose name was Luther Fuller, he stood at the helm and he guided that ship to the shore and was burned alive. Theodore Fontana took this story and he, he wrote a ballad about it, on it, and he idolizes this story in that sense that John Maynard dies for all. 
And in this sense, he becomes a, the story becomes a type of the crucifixion of the sacrifice of one for many. Um, because it touches an emotional chord in me. I do not dare to read it myself, and I asked my wife to do that. I don't know if I can sustain myself as well, but we will try. John Maynard? Who is John Maynard? John Maynard was our helmsman true. To solid land he carried us through. He saved our lives, our noble king. He died for us, his praise we sing. From Detroit to Buffalo, as mist sprays her bow like flakes of snow, over Lake Erie the shallow takes flight. And every heart is joyful and light. In the dusk, the passengers all can already make out the dim landfall. And approaching John Maynard, their hearts free of care, they ask for their helmsman, are we almost there? He looks around and toward the shore, still 30 minutes to Buffalo, a half hour more. All hearts are happy, all hearts are light. Then out of the hole comes a cry of fright. Fire! It is that terrified shout. From the cabin and hatch, black smoke pours out. Smoke, then fire, and flames aglow. And still 20 minutes to Buffalo. And the passengers in a colorful crowd stand pressed together on the bow. Up on the bow there is still air and light, but the smoke at the helm forms a thick, dark night. Where are we? Where? The men must know, and still 15 minutes to Buffalo. The wind grows strong, but the smoke cloud stays. To the helm, the captain turns his gaze. The helmsman is hidden by the raging fire. But through the Holborn, and the captain inquires, still there, John Maynard, yes, I am. Onto the beach, into the surf, yes, sir, that's my plan. And the people cry, hold on, hello, and still 10 minutes to Buffalo. Still there, John Maynard? And the answer is clear, though with dying voice, yes, sir, I'm still here. And in the surf, rocks, obstacles afloat, into their midst, he plunges the boat. To be saved is the only way to go. Salvation, the shores, of Buffalo. The fire is out. The ship is run aground. All are saved. Only one can't be found. The bells ring out. Their notes all fly. From churches and chapels to heaven on high, the city is still, but for funeral bells. For one service, only the sad sound swells. In the procession, 10,000 go by, or maybe more, and not one dry eye. With layers of flowers, the grave they soften. Under more flowers, they bury the coffin. With golden script in marble stone, the city has its tribute shown. Here lies John Maynard. In smoke and fire, he held fast to the wheel. He did not tire. He saved our lives, our noble king. He died for us. His praise we sing. A 
O sacred head now wounded, this was the first coronation of Christ. This song was, um, it, it is attributed to Bernard of Clairvaux, who is supposed, who lived at the end of the 11th century and uh, was later translated into German by Paul, Paul Gerhardt. Uh, taken over and the final arrangement that we all know musically was made by Johann Sebastian Bach, who wrote above every composition that he, that he made, solo deo gloria, to God be alone the glory.
May our young musicians always bear the crown of Christ in their life. It's my wish and my prayer for them. I would like to speak some words of exhortation and admonition to us this morning. And um, I take my scripture from Matthew 26, 31, following. Then saith Jesus unto them, All ye shall be offended because of me this night. For it is written, I will smite the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock shall be scattered abroad. But after I am risen again, I will go before you into Galilee. Peter answered and said unto him, Though all men shall be offended because of thee, yet I will never be offended. Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, that this night before the cock crow, thou shalt deny me thrice. Peter said unto him, Though I should die with thee, I will, yet will I not deny thee. Likewise also said all the disciples. My question is, what do we say? And uh, let us be beware that we do not overestimate ourselves and constantly look to Jesus and believe him what he says, that you will deny if you do not stay in my shadow. So this is what happened before the cross. There were many little denials. And after the cross, we do the same. I quote here from a book, uh, the early writings. It says, many look with horror at the cause of the course of the Jews in rejecting and crucifying Christ. And as they read the story of his shameful abuse, they think they love him. And I would like to add, tears roll down our cheeks. And we would not have denied him as Peter or crucified him as did the Jews. But God reads the hearts of all. And he has brought it to the test in Jesus Christ. Jeremiah tells us that the heart is desperately wicked. More than anybody could get to the bottom of it. But fortunately, Jeremiah tells us also that the Lord can search the heart. Out of the heart come all kinds of filthy things that defile the man. All the transgressions of the commandments that we know of. And he was wounded for our transgressions. He was wounded for our iniquity. For every denial that we practice, he bore the curse. For every blessing that we ask, he was treated by the curse of God, which he voluntarily took upon himself. Therefore, Hebrews 3 verse 12 says, Take heed, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. The dark Middle Ages were called dark because this truth was not known, the truth of Christ's righteousness. And they, one of the morning stars, there, there were two morning stars in the Reformation. One came from England. Who was he? John Wycliffe. The other one came from France, and we hardly know him. He, he was, um, his name was Lefebvre. In France, before the name of Luther had been heard as a reformer, the day had already begun to break. One of the first to catch the light was the aged Lefebvre, a man of extensive learning, a professor in the University of Paris and a sincere and zealous papist. In his researches into ancient literature, his attention was directed to the Bible and he introduced its study amongst his students. Lefebvre was an enthusiastic adorer of the saints and he had undertaken to prepare a history of the saints and martyrs as given in the legends of the church. This was a work which involved great labor, but he had already made considerable progress in it when, thinking that he might obtain useful assistance from the Bible, he began its study with this object. 
Here indeed he found saints brought to view, but not as such as figured in the Roman calendar. A flood of divine light broke upon his mind. In amazement and disgust, he turned away from his self-appointed task and devoted himself to the word of God. The precious truths which he there discovered, he soon began to teach. In 1512, that is five years before Luther nailed his thesis to the church door at Wittenberg, other before Luther or Swingley had begun the work of reform, Lefebvre wrote, It is God who gives us, by faith, that righteousness which by grace alone justifies to eternal life. Dwelling upon the mysteries of redemption, he exclaimed, Oh, the unspeakable greatness of that exchange. The sinless one is condemned, and he who is guilty goes free. The blessing bears the curse, and the curse is brought into blessing. The life dies, and the dead live. The glory is whelmed in darkness, and he who knew nothing but confusion of face is clothed with glory. Can we say amen to that? Amen. That is the foundation faith of the Protestant Reformation, and it will be the foundation stone of the final Reformation that will lighten the earth with its glory. We have now the possibility to give our gifts, and while the offertory is collected, the Gracias Choir will sing, Remember Me. Is there, did I miss something? Uh, the duet. I dropped a line too low, I'm sorry. Um, Anda and Ailsa Serban will sing for us above all. Excuse me.
We will continue with our musical contributions and um, we will now hear the Gracias Choir with the song Remember Me while the offering is being collected. We will say a word of prayer before we start. Our dear Father in heaven, we thank you that you gave us your dear son. You paid a price that cannot be understood. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for paying the price that also cannot be understood. And for your spirit that does work that goes beyond understanding. We understand that love demands no less in response. And we would like to give you our hearts today, here, now as a little token of what we are going to do inside we would give you would like to give you a symbolic little something on the outside blessed we pray in jesus name amen
participate, participate in um, joining our voices with the angels to praise Christ for what he has done for us. Let's all turn to 154. of Jesus 303.
you so much. Beneath the cross of Jesus, on that day at Calvary, three confessions were made by three men. In the closing events of the crucifixion day, fresh evidence was given of the fulfillment of prophecy, a new witness born to Christ's divinity. When the darkness had lifted from the cross and the Savior's dying cry had been uttered, immediately another voice was heard saying, truly, this was the Son of God. These words were said in no whispered tones. All eyes were turned, turned to see whence they came. Who had spoken? It was the centurion, the Roman soldier. The divine patience of the Savior and his sudden death with the cry of victory upon his lips had impressed this heathen. In the bruised, broken body hanging upon the cross, the centurion recognized the form of the Son of God. He could not refrain from confessing his faith. Thus, again, evidence was given that our Redeemer was to see of the travail of his soul. Upon the very day of his death, three men, differing widely from one another, had declared their faith. He who commanded the Roman guard, he who bore the cross of the Savior, and he who died upon the cross at his side. When J Jacob gave his parting testimony to his sons, under the inspiration of the spirit of prophecy, he spoke these words, unto him shall the gathering of the people be. And the, gather and the gathering of the people is symbolized in these three men. They are descendants from the three sons of Noah. The Roman centurion was a son of Japhet. The Jew who died next to Jesus was a Semite, the son of one, uh, a descendant of Sem, Shem. And the, the one who bore his cross, the Cyrenian, was an African, that he was a son of, son of Ham. So at the, foot of cross, at the foot of the cross, beneath the cross of Jesus, the confessions of faith represent the gathering of the whole world to him. We will now sing the hymn 246, Worthy is the Lamb. And uh, thereafter, we will hear the, a reading, and we can read it from Revelation 5, 1 to 14, by Michael Crozier.
be reading from Revelation chapter 5. And I saw in the right hand of him who sat on the throne a scroll written inside and on the back, sealed with seven seals. Then I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, Who is worthy to open the scroll and to loose its seals? No one in heaven or on earth or under the earth was able to open the scroll or to look at it. So I wept much because no one was found worthy to open and read the scroll or look at it. But one of the elders said to me, Do not weep. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has prevailed to open the scroll and loose its seven seals. And I looked, and behold, in the midst of the throne and the four living creatures, and in the midst of the elders stood a lamb as though it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent out into all the earth. Then he came and took the scroll out of the right hand of him who sat on the throne. Now when he had taken the scroll, the four living creatures and the twenty-four elders fell down before the lamb, each having a harp and golden bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. And they sang a new song, saying, You are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals, for you were slain and have redeemed us to God by your blood, out of every tribe and tongue and people and nation, and have made us kings and priests to our God, and we shall reign on the earth. Then I looked, and I heard the voice of many angels around the throne, the living creatures and the elders, and the number of them was 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands, saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. And every creature which is in heaven and on earth and under the earth and such as are in the seas and all that are in them I heard saying, Blessed and honor and glory and power be to him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb forever and ever. Then the four living creatures said, Amen. And the 24 elders fell down and worshiped him who lives forever and ever. Amen. Our world's history is divided in before Christ and after Christ, and right in the middle is the cross. We will now hear the quartet that sings the song Beyond the Cross. And that is looking into the glorious future. Thank you. journey I knelt down a cross where Jesus once died for me and I asked is this a place where hope abides and there she said
tomb to the place where his body once lay and I cried Lord help me see is there hope here for me and this I heard him say beyond the cross is a tomb that is empty you won't find me with earth, isn't it? And that is good. I would like to read the scripture in uh, Philippians 2, verses 5. Let the same mind be in you that was even in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. But he made himself of no reputation and took on him the form of a servant and was made unto men and found in the shape of men. He humbled himself and became obedient unto the death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore God hath also highly exalted him and given him, him a name above every name that at the name of Jesus should every knee bow, both of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is the Lord, unto the glory of God the Father. When some, somebody was nailed to the cross or to a tree, he was considered to be under the curse of God, and there was no hope for him for eternal life. And that is what Christ went through for us. He tasted death for every man that we may have life. And this marvelous plan of redemption calls for a personal discipleship in which he is the shepherd. And we will hear now from Susan and Rodika the song, the O oh, Shepherd Divine. Thank you. 
I just switched off my computer by mistake. Bear with me for a second. We just heard the song of the Divine Shepherd. Christ is shepherd and lamb. He is priest and sacrifice. He is servant and king. He is the righteous one and he is the cursed. He is God and he is man. He is the first and the last, the Alpha and the Omega. And when he will speak that Omega and the pain of sin will have forever ended. I would like to read a quote to you from the great controversy. It says there, the redeemed raise a song of praise that echoes and re-echoes through the walls of heaven. Salvation to our God who sitteth upon the throne and unto the Lamb. And angel and seraph unite their voices in adoration. As the redeemed have beheld the power and malignity of Satan, they have seen as never before that no power but that of Christ could have made them conquerors. In all that shining throng, there are none to ascribe salvation to themselves, as if they had prevailed by their own power and goodness. Nothing is said of what they have done or suffered, but the burden of every song, the keynote of every anthem is salvation to our God and, and, and unto the Lamb. Amen. Let us sing the song because he lives in closing and I would like you to, to stand up to give honor to the King of Kings and because when you stand you can take deeper breaths and your voice will be different.
God sent his son. They called him Jesus. He came to love, heal, and forgive. He lived and died to buy my poor. Savior lives because he lives I can face tomorrow because he lives all fear is gone because I know to say the Lord's Prayer, and we will do it in a very unconventional way. I ask you to make a circle around the room, and everybody gives his hand to somebody else, so that the circle is not broken. You stay there. Okay. Okay. Join me on this side. we still got some chain right here. Chain right here. Artie, now we will, we will pray with Jeff. He is the lead speaker. We will pray what we have been taught, and that is the Lord's Prayer, as we do it together. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day in our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the king and the king and the glory forever. Amen. And as we leave here today, let us ponder on what we have experienced here today. And it is my prayer that we will go out amongst other people and they will see that we have been with you. In Jesus' name. Here with the meeting is adjourned till later this afternoon. What time do we meet? Six. At six. Six o'clock. Six o'clock. We'll, um, we would be well happy to see you all here at six o'clock.